Shadow, you're doing great. Shadow's a lab mix and he's five and a half years old and I expect he's neuter, huh? Okay, beautiful dog enjoying the bull pizzle. Yeah, find your stuff. Okay. Do you so, have a laser pointer? Yeah, yeah, and a little little a splurge about Shadow, if you would, for us. Yeah, so um, we got him from Amish country, so uh, like Elkhart County and LaGrange County, because we live not very far from there. So he was uh, born on a farm. Um, so it's kind of interesting, actually, the first day we got him, we went to um, Pet Smart, and he had, like, vomited in the cart, and he has all sorts of, like, hay and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think, and cheap stuff, so I think that's, that's what they fed the, the dogs, you know, grain and stuff like that. Now, how old was he when he... Eight weeks. <clears throat> okay, so you remember, a puppy will eat anything, right? I mean, if you ever get a chance to see a new crap on a dead puppy, it's not a very pleasant thing. But I think I told this class, I've seen thumbtacks in the stomach of a puppy. There's nothing that they won't chew on because they have no concept about that. So on the farm, they might be eating things in the um, the barnyard or whatever. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's so shadow story. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, zoonotic diseases. Okay. Um, so this is actually kind of really brief because you could do, I'm guessing, like a whole course on this. Like maybe you should. Do that next semester, and we could come listen to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you might ask, like, what makes a disease zoonotic? Uh, so that means that it is spread between animals and people. And I believe the majority of the time it's from animals to people. Um, and then it also can result in cause of sickness or death if it's severe. Um, and then this is why that it's uh, tracked and reported by the Centers for Disease Control. Um, and then it's caused by um, viruses, bacteria, parasites, and fungi. And then kind of here I found this nice kind of little graphic of some animals that can to have a yep. disease and spread it to people. Yeah. Um, and then here's a bunch of uh, some common ones. Common ones. Um, and then here's this nice diagram I found online of. Um, so on this left here is what causes the disease, so like either a bacteria, a fungi, um, a virus, and then the animal, and then uh, what it causes in humans. Yeah. So probably everyone's kind of heard of like cat, or cat, cat scratch fever, I believe that's what that's referring to. Mm -hmm. Rabies, of course, the plague, and then like Lyme disease, really, you know, really common. That's a nice little figure. Um, <clears throat> there's a shadow coming up and said you're doing a good job. Um, recently, okay, yeah, me too. Um, what do I want to say? The rabies thing. Bats. I think when I went in, when I was going to school, I don't think they knew bats transmitted rabies. And has anybody seen in the within the last week anything about bats and rabies and children? Okay. Some place, I want to say California, there was a school that had some infestation of bats, and then somebody found out one of the bats was rabid, and I think they figured out 42 of the children had been exposed to that bat. So I mean, quite a public health thing, 42, because if a person gets rabies, you, be, you know, if the clinical signs show up, it's almost 99.999% fatal, there's a, there's a woman girl in uh, Wisconsin. She was at church one day and saw a bat on the floor. And sometimes they don't look like a bat if they're folded up. You know, you know they might be mistaken for something else. I've heard of being mistaken for a billfold where somebody would pick it up. And the girl got bit, but she never told anybody. And then about two or three weeks later, she developed, started developing some signs. And then, of course, it took a while to figure out, oh yeah, I was bit by a bat, and then so they, you know, she was going through active rabies, and they gave her some experimental treatment where they put her in a coma and did some crazy antiviral stuff. I mean, it was all experimental because she was going to be dying, right? So you pull out all the stops. It's experimental drug time. Anyway, she survived, and she's got the claim of fame of one of the only people in the world that ever had the clinical signs of rabies but then survive, but she's not like she was, okay? She's maybe, I don't know if she's 50% uh, 
of what she was, but it was very kind of interesting story that she got bit and um, didn't tell anybody. But there's a current thing going on, and if we have time at the end, I might Google it, but it's like kids, bats in a school. And I think there were 42 people, 42 children exposed. Take it away, buddy. Okay. Um, so then we're going to talk about how it spread. Uh, so there's uh, basically four different methods of how it could be spread. Uh, so first we have direct contact. So that's where you come into contact with um, like a bodily fluid from the animal, so saliva, blood, mucus, uh, feces, urine. Um, and that makes sense why it's called direct. Um, indirect contact is where uh, you'll get it from like animals where, or places where animals like live or roam. So like on pasture, um, and grass, things like that. So you always want to be careful um, when you're walking, things like that. Um, vector borne, so this goes back to um, like the plague is that that's where it's like in within the host, so like a tick, um, and then when they bite you, they inject it. Um, and then foodborne, so you could have unpasteurized milk or <coughs> undercooked meat, and then also these contaminated fruits and vegetables. So that's like if it has like um, like feces on it and things like that, okay. and they're not properly uh, so like E. coli and stuff. Mm -hmm. Where they're not properly like rinsed and stuff like that when they're prepared. Um, and then there's this nice little diagram that I found that's really good. That is very nice. Okay. Um, and then who's at greater risk of these diseases? Um, so it really could be everyone, but uh, a lot of times it's children under age of five, um, and then adults older than uh, 65, and then people with weakened immune systems. So I think all of these mm -hmm. fit into that one category. Um, I found this nice diagram online. So a lot of times with younger children, um, mm -hmm. like cats or dogs, well, this is like a, a sandbox. sandbox yeah. um, and so they kind of, he touches the you know feces, he starts touching himself, and they can spread that way. Mm -hmm. Kids are always putting their hands yeah. in their mouth, aren't they? I mean, that's how your infections happen, and uh, forever, if you could, you know, they, it's just a natural thing. But. Um, and I believe this is the last one. Um, so how can you protect yourself? Um, so you always want to make sure that you keep your hands clean um, and practice proper hand washing technique. Um, I know that when you, if you go into vet school, there's like, like a, they, sometimes they sing like a song of how to, to like it, it between oh, your fingers oh, yeah, and yeah. The, um, so that's just to keep in mind that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to stay safe around your pets, so it's not to be afraid of them, but like um, they could, you know, scratch you and things like that. Can um, be exposed to open wounds and things like that. And then a lot of times, sometimes we can't prevent bites from like mosquitoes, especially in the summer months. Um, but and then learn how to handle food safely. That's a big thing. So obviously we're, we're all like raw um, meats. Mm -hmm. And then you want to become aware with like all the different diseases that are out there. Um, and then you want to try and obviously avoid, avoid, avoid bites from all animals. Um, and here's this nice little diagram I found online. Um, so actually it says that, this says that hands are the number, way, or number one way that they are spread. Some examples, MRSA, staph, viruses, salmonella. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. Yeah, zoonotic diseases, transmitting usually from animals to people. And if you deal with a lot of animals, you got to be careful. Not to get personal, but anybody want to tell us what? Uh, yeah, okay, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, it was kind of gross. <laughs> but um, I showed dairy cattle for a guy, and depending on the year, um, they'd have really bad ringworm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. like we would be the ones to come in and like take care of it if we were showing that year. And so like vaccinations and like topical ointments and stuff, and you'd have to like scrape on the ringworm. They get some big scabs. Yeah, and Cat. then put like the cream on it and stuff. And then after doing that for years, eventually I like got a spot on my arm of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's neat about ringworm, it's maybe not neat, but it's it's a misnomer. It's a fungus. It's not a worm at all. And I get a, I'm not sure the history of it. But that was the one that got me. I got from cattle. Yeah, it's easy. Okay, other stories? 
Um, yeah, my sister-in-law was at a co-op here. Co-op here. I don't know we'll say like which one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Keep it she, general. She got bit by a bat, um, <laughs> and so she had to go through the regular mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because then you know there's a certain protocol if you get bit by a potentially rabid animal, there's certain protocols you do depending on your status and the animal status. But usually if you don't know, then you do antiserum and the vaccine. Other stories? Um, at the wildlife rehab center that I worked at this summer, um, there was one guy that got bit by a skunk, that, like an employee, and then he had to get the rabies vaccines. Mm -hmm. But ticks were also big because Lyme disease was like on the rise this mm -hmm. summer, especially. And so like, we'd always pull ticks off the animals and like, have to um, like light them on fire or smash them. Like okay. you, you can't like just like throw them back outside because right. they come right okay, back yeah, in. Yeah. And that's a very common one, Lyme disease from ticks. That's crazy. Yes. So this doesn't really have to do with disease, but okay. yesterday I was walking home and out by Kenoy Hall, okay. there was just a raccoon in daylight. Wow. Yeah. So it ended up like going into a sewer. But it looked mm. a little unstable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I don't know. I was very concerned. Yeah, yeah. Safety yeah. Now here's an interesting thing. Maybe I should try to find it. I took a virology class when I was a graduate student. You know, all about the viruses only. It was taught by a veterinarian that was a virologist. It was neat. He showed us a film one time of a skunk that had rabies, and one of the uh, characteristics of a lot of animals that have uh, rabies, active rabies, they tend to have tunnel vision. And so the skunk is walking towards the person with the camera, right? And he was like right in front of it, but he knew that the skunk could probably see him, right? All the camera guy did was step off to the side and the skunk couldn't see him because he had tunnel vision. The skunk walked right by him. It was quite dramatic, you know, to tell you, it was just, he had tunnel vision and he was walking by. And the other film I saw, and I know it's someplace out there, and this is a bad one, it's an army film, uh, training film, and it shows a person dying of rabies, and the person dies on film. And it was in India because, and this, this is a great story, I mean, you know, terrible bad story. In India, there's a lot of packs of dogs, and a lot of the dogs are not vaccinated. I mean, we're blessed here in the United States, I'm not sure if you could go out and get rabies, except, you know, not from the dogs, but some other rabid animal. But in the worldwide, do you guys know how many people die of rabies every year? Worldwide? Like in the United States, it's one, two, or three people. But worldwide, anybody have the number? What's that? I don't know. Sorry. Tell me. 35,000. 35,000. 50,000 die of rabies every year. So it's quite, quite the story. 